Hey, it's Coach Chris with Hoops King, and I'm going to teach you today how to do a basketball scorebook. Now, I coach youth basketball, and I know many parents get called out of the crowd to come down and do the book or the score clock, and this video is going to help you understand how uh, to do the scorebook and what everything means in the scorebook. And in a second video, I'm going to do the scorebook in real time with real game footage so you can see how it's done in real time. Now that's a different video. Just click down in the description or the comments to see that second video. So let's take a look at what all this stuff means in the scorebook. All right, so as we dive here into the scorebook, let's take a look at the top left corner. Uh, we'll have the team name is Paint Rock and they're red. So that R right next to their team name is what color of uniform they're wearing. Uh, we take a look at the coach's name for Paint Rock and we'll see that there's a T1, T2, and T3. Those are technical fouls, and you'll see that the coach did receive one in this game that was completed. Uh, where was the game played at? It's in Paint Rock. Uh, we have the referee and the two names of the umpires uh, that were officiating the game. Now, if you need scorebooks, just click the link down below. It'll take you to Amazon.com, and you'll have lots of choices for different scorebooks you can use. The one I'm using is the Mark V, which is also available on Amazon. Up at the top here running across, you'll see that we have a running score. So when you're doing the scorebook, you're going to keep the score of the game as it's going in addition to keeping how many points each player is scoring. And then, of course, those should match up at the end of each quarter, half, and the game. So now something I'm not sure about on the score sheet and how they did it is the three-point field goals. So what they've done with the two-point field goals is, so the first score, they didn't mark the box one. They didn't mark box one. They just marked box two because they had two points, which is fine. But then on the three-pointers, they did not skip two boxes. For example, to get to 25 points, they may have had 22. You would skip box 23. You would skip box 24, not fill that X in there, but just fill in 25 because from 22 to 25 could have been a three-pointer. And I think that's not a bad way to do this uh, and that you can tell exactly in the running score where the two three-point and free throw goals were made. Because obviously here we skip one, two. We know that was a two-point field goal. From three to four, we skip three. We know that was a two-point field goal. Going right to five and filling that in, we know that that must have been a free throw. Now to continue that same pattern again, you'd want to skip two boxes on a three-point field goal, and that would signify the three-point field goal. The other way to do this is you can just check every point as it goes. You could just fill every single box with an X when a point scored, and of course, two boxes for a two-pointer, one box for a free throw, and three boxes for a three-pointer. Uh, down here underneath the referee, we have turnovers for Paint Rock, how many they committed, and then the final tally is circled uh, in 12. So they committed 12 turnovers in this game. Uh, next section we have uh, next to the umpires is the first quarter score, first half score, third quarter score, and final score of Paint Rock. So they had 14 points in the first quarter. And then they, at half they had 29, at the end of the third they had 44, and they ended up with a total of 60 points. And then you see Jacksboro, you have their first quarter score, what they had at the half, at the end of the third, and the final score. So this final score of this game was 60 to 59. Okay, here on the second team sheet, you can see uh, in the middle top here where we continue on who the person is keeping the score, that's the official scorebook keeper, and then who is running the clock. And so those are other things you'll need to fill in. And as we move down, we have all the players' names, and then we have what position they're playing. And if you're doing a youth basketball tournament, a lot of times the number field will just be good. You don't need to list everybody's names. Uh, but at a high school game, a college game, of course, it's going to be more official. A school game will be much more official than just a travel basketball or a lot of times an AAU game. Uh, let's take a look at the player row. So let's look at Williamson. He's a guard. That's why he has a G. And then the quarters that he played in all feature an X. So he played in every quarter. We are not keeping track of the amount of time that any player played specifically, just that they appeared in a quarter. For the quarters, let's look at Smith here. F for forward. He only appeared in the second quarter. He did not play in the first, third, or fourth quarter. Thompson, who's a forward, number 15, he did not get into the game 
at all. And that's why he has no check boxes. Same with Labarda on the bottom. That player did not get into the game. So Williamson was number 14. We enter the player's uniform number in. And then the next uh, column over is personal fouls. And you'll see that there is a total of five uh, that they can commit. And of course, some AAU tournaments will allow six fouls uh, that I've been a part of. So that may be an adjustment you would have to make in the scorebook uh, based on how many fouls a particular tournament's rules will allow you to have. And then you have T1 and T2 uh, for technical fouls for the player to keep track of their individual technical fouls. And then we move on to the first half, first quarter. So Williamson scored two two-point baskets this quarter. So he would have had four points in the first quarter, and then he scored a three-pointer in the second quarter a three-pointer, two-pointer in the third quarter, and he made a two-pointer. Now, the line right below the numbers are circles. Those are free throw attempts. So in the first quarter, he took one free throw and missed it. Same thing in the second quarter. He took two free throws and missed them, and he missed two free throws in the third quarter. But in the fourth quarter, he finally made one, and we put an X through that, or you could circle it if you wanted to. But it's some indication that that free throw was made. So let's look at Williamson's scoring summary. He has four two-point goals recorded. And as we go back, we've got one, two, three, four. So that matches up. In the three-point column, it says that he made two. And we can just double check ourselves, and we do. We have two three-point goals made. Free throws attempted. We have six down, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six circles, which is attempts. And then he only made one, which is the circle with the X, for a total of 15 points. Right next to the turnovers, we have the section for POB, which is possession out of bounds. So this is where we're keeping track of the jump ball in the scorebook. And obviously, a lot of scores tables will have an arrow that will flip electronically with a light, or you flip the wood arrow, whatever you have. But it is recorded in the official scorebook, because that's always uh, officially what is looked at. If there's a discrepancy, they'll look at the scorebook. They won't look at the arrow that's being flipped back and forth. So at the beginning of the game, on the first jump ball, in this game, we here I'll show you the other, the other sheet for the other team. So here's the other team. They're Jacks Burrow, and they have a W for white. So that's why we're going to see R and W over here. All right, and then so the first jump ball happened in quarter one. That's what the one stands for. And then the 6-14 is that jump ball happened at six minutes and 14 seconds left in the first quarter. All right, so then the next one after red receives a ball, then the next jump ball is gonna go to white and they're going in the other direction. So the arrow goes the opposite way. And again, the next jump ball happened in the first quarter with two minutes and 49 seconds left. And then it just continues on from there, the possession out of bounds. And as you can see, we'll go over to the next sheet. And the last jump ball ended up the fourth quarter with 521 left. And then you can see you could fill out red, white, red, white, and no other jump balls happened. So that's why uh, that field, those fields don't have any time or quarter in them. Okay, down on the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to have the amount of timeouts that each team called. So Paint Rock called two first quarter timeouts. And then the numbers below those were what player called those timeouts. Now, that could vary. Sometimes the coach can call timeout. It really depends on what rules you're dealing with. But in this instance, we recorded one timeout was called in the first quarter by number 14. And in the first quarter, a second timeout was called by number 21, I believe that is. Over to the right here, we're keeping track of team fouls. So not only do we track uh, the individual fouls, so like Williamson up here at the top, we've tracked that he has five fouls, Harris has four fouls. During the first half, we're keeping track of how many team fouls that they committed each team. So that way we know if they're in the one and one or the double bonus or whatever your rules are again, uh, will dictate that. But you want to keep a running total of the team fouls. So you would record Williamson with a foul up here. And then let's say that was the first one in the game, you'd mark the number one for first half. And then of course the second half we start over on team fouls, player fouls do not start over. You'll continue on in the second half with that. So let's take a look at the player technical fouls. So number 13, Bush, as we see here, he's marked with one technical foul. And then his name was written down 
and he has one technical file there. So it's just kind of duplication really uh, on this score sheet that we're keeping track of the player technical files. Same with Smith. He had one technical file up here and then we just recorded it down here at the bottom. Uh, not really necessary to put in both places, uh, but it is a way to double check to make sure that the right player was assigned a technical foul and there's no discrepancy about that later. Okay, as we look over at the scoring summary again, you'll see a team totals at the bottom. So they're going to total all the twos made, all the threes made, all the free throws attempted, and the free throws made, and the total points. All right, so as we total them down, the 21 represents that there was 21 two-point field goals made. 4 plus 3, 7, 10, 13, 15, 17, 18, 19, 21. And then, we, of course, we have three three-point field goals made as well. Now, they did calculate the free throws made percentage on this sheet. So 9 out of 25 would be 36%. And again, the total points are calculated, and the total points down here should match exactly what's up in the running score at the top. So basically it's the same for each side of the sheet. The big difference is your score and timer uh, are on the other sides for that. So you would obviously work with the book open to both sides of the scorebook.